वेलकम बैक टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिप्लॉय टू टीयर आर्किटेक्चर अप्लीकेशन इन ए डब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट सो दिस इज द आर्किटेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिप्लॉय इन योर ए डब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट सो फॉर दैट आई बिलीव यू मस्ट हैव योर ए डब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट एंड यू विल बी लॉगिंग विथ टू दिस ए डब्ल्यू एस अकाउंट विथ आई एम यूजर हु मस्ट have administrator permission because we are going to create all these resources and to create this resources you need very broad permission so administrator permission will be good enough what we'll do here we will start with networking so we are going to create virtual private cloud and within this virtual private cloud we will create two type of sub network one is the public network and another is private network in public network we will deploy our wave server and here we are going to install our application then in private subnet we are going to create a database server where application will store application data then we also establish connection between the wave server and the application server with help of security group and we will secure it and then we'll try to access this application from web server public ip address and at the end we will map the web server public ip address with the dns name and then we will try to access it from the internet and this is exactly what we do in real time application now i said this is two tier application because here you see we have web tier then another we have database tier so this is layer 1 and uh, this is layer 2 so this is two tier okay so we have application tier and the database tier whereas you also have three tier application so what happen in three tier application we will have the another layer or you can say another tier maybe this could be app server and because of this this is called three tier so basically what happen your web tier will call app tier and app tier will call the database tier okay so this become three tier application anyways now to do this project we are going to follow a step by step guides that have created for my aws mastery program so this is the solution we are going to look into that and this very detailed solution you see 101 page of the solution we are going to follow here so if you are here i believe you have completed all previous topics like aws accounts i identity and access management storage networking compute and database because here we are going to use all this knowledge all together to complete this assignments so this is those are basic building block to complete this assignments if you have not completed those videos those lecture i will recommend please go ahead and complete those then come back here so you will get most out of it with that notes let's get started so first things first as i said we need to create our networking for this application but before that here again this is again as i said this is assignments is part of my aws mastery program so here you need to create your aws account and you need to secure your aws account for that we have the assignments then we have to set up budget and alert so if you are following all those things then your account is secured enough so if there is any things out of budget you get alert but anyways coming point to the actual implementation we are going to start with the networking so as i said we are going to create our network and to create this network first of all we need to decide where we are going to create this network in our aws account 
and for that we need to select AWS region so let's go to my AWS account and here this is my AWS account and here I'm in my one of AWS account and this is called epic book and here we need to select AWS region where we want to create this project and deploy this project and what is important of the region I have already covered this in first lecture where I have explained AWS account and global infrastructure if you have not completed that once again go ahead and complete that so you will understand why we are going to select AWS region now you see here we have different AWS region and one of the most important region to use a region is that is nearest to our customer so for this session I'm going to select Mumbai region so let's select Mumbai and then we will go to our networking to go to our networking what we need to do let's go to the documentation our solution and in this tab set up the networking and here first things first okay before even creating the networking is very important for us to do the planning and designing of our networking okay so what is mean planning and designing so in planning and designing we need to ensure which cider block we are going to use cider block means classless classless inter domain routing again this is I have explained in very detail in networking session so please go ahead watch that and here we can select different subnets so for this session we are going to use slash 16 means we are going to get around 65,000 IP address then we need to understand we need to decide how many subnet do we need and for that again we need to select IP address that will be subset of our VPC IP address so we are going to use this IP address for our VPC then for the subnets we are going to use subset of that that will be 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and on that range again if you are confused again I will recommend go ahead watch that video so you will understand now now we have IP addresses we know then to create VPC we need to go to the okay first things we need to select the region that we have selected then to go to AWS VPC dashboard we need to select here then select the networking then click VPC and then we can create VPC let's go to the AWS account and let's type here VPC is loading and now this is loaded and now here we see we don't have any resources in this uh, Mumbai region in terms of the VPC and VPC resources so we can click here to create the VPC click create VPC and first things first we need to select the details of the VPC we have two options one is the VPC and more so this is some automated way and pre-filled details what you see over here okay and we are not going to follow that we are going to create VPC only and here we will give name of the VPC so let's give this name epic reads epic reads VPC and again this is very well explained in this documentation okay so see we have to select VPC only then VPC epic reads let's go to the documentation so I will change this to ensure we are flowing the documentation VPC epic reads and then we need to select a cider range 10.0.0.0 slash 20 no 16 and then it will be default tenancy and create VPC double check the documentation okay name is correct cider is correct and scroll down tenancy will be default and tag will come automatic and create VPC you see all things looks good and create VPC 
it will take couple of second now our bpc is ready now let's go back to the documentation next we are going to create the subnet to create subnet we have to select go to the subnet tab here then create subnets let's go to the aws account select subnet and create subnet as we know to create subnet we need to select vpc because subnet is subset of our vpc network main network so we will select our vpc epic rates and then we will give name and let's quickly look at the documentation what is the name here we are selecting so I'm calling it public subnet one epic rates okay then we have to select ability zones then cider range for the subnet and create subnet so let's give the name public subnet one epic rates then let's select the ap south one then vpc block is selected by default now we need to select the ip address for our first subnet and that's something we have seen in documentation then give slash 24 and that's all create so first subnets got created then we have to repeat the same steps to create the second subnet private subnet again steps are given over here okay so i will just copy this ip address so i no need to type there let's go again here create a subnet select the vpc then we'll give the name we'll call private subnet one epic reads then i will select again this is private subnet so private subnet one right that was the public subnet so again let's select the same subnet sub same ability zones okay i will tell you in the next project when we make this application high available why we are selecting this ability zones and when we select different ability zones so let's park this question for the time being now we selected the cider and let's go ahead and create it so now if we close this we'll see we have the two subnets one the public subnet one private subnets let's go to the documentation scroll down now we have to review the details all looks good now in this screenshot we see uh, there is a multiple vpcs but we see we have the subnets over here scroll down now if you have been watched the networking video we know the subnet which we have created here saying name as a public subnet and name as a private subnet they are not either public nor either private okay okay no they are subnets okay but those are public subnet is not public subnet okay now to make this subnet public subnet we have to do something again i have explained this in very detail in networking section okay in networking video so what we need to do first things first we need to set up the internet gateway gateway to the internet to give access of public subnet to the internet okay so how do we do that again all the steps are given over here we have to go and select the internet gateway and create internet gateway okay it's very simple steps so let's go to this account and here internet gateway and create internet gateway now let's give this name igw epic epic rates and create internet gateway it's got created next step is to attach to our vpc we have only one vpc let's attach it and this part is completed now second things what we need to do after that we need to create a route table for the public subnet again i will want to go in the detail this again very well explained in our networking sections so let's go in the route table and we see already one route table got created for us and this is will be our private route table so let's call this private rt for epic epic rates so we know this is private route table and here we are going to create the public route table so let's give this name public 
आरटी फोर एपिक एडिट्स मे वील सिलेक्ट आवर बी पी सी वी हैव वन बी पी सी एंड क्रिएट द राउट टेबल नेक्स्ट वॉट वी नीड टू डू टू मेक दिस राउट टेबल पब्लिक राउट टेबल वी नीड टू एडिट द रूट एंड रूट टू वॉट रूट टू एक्सेस टू द इंटरनेट जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो डॉट जीरो स्लैश जीरो वेथ टू इंटरनेट गेट वे एंड वील सेलेक्ट द इंटरनेट गेट वे वॉट वी क्रिएटेड एंड सेव इट नाउ following this steps attaching nat gateway to this route table this become the public route table now we have created the route table now to make this subnet public route table what we need to do we need to attach public subnet to this public route table so we will click here edit subnet association we will select the public route table sorry public subnet and save it again if this is something you are getting confused so i will say go ahead and watch networking session once again okay i have explained this in very very detail now let's select the private route table go to the subnet association okay and here let's edit it and also attach pub private subnet to our private route table now all sets so let's look at the documentation and here everything is set as we need now review and everything is done so here what we have did we have set up our vpc and public subnet private subnet internet gateway public route table private route table and we associated this respective subnet to the respective route table so now this is set when i said set what does it mean it means this setup is now completed i mean this setup is now completed and we see we have used single ability zone ap south 1 a to create public subnet and private subnet perfect now let's go to the our solution document and here this another steps to create the nsel and security group we are not going to create nsel this advanced topic but we will create the security group and these are again part of the networking okay so if you scroll down you see here security group so let's create one security group so by default we have a default security group when we create any vpc in our aws account so we get a default vpc and technically we should not be using default vpc so let create a security group here and we call this web server sc security group we we'll call it allow http and ssh access again if you are getting confused what is http ssh access i explained this in very detail in ec2 session so go ahead and watch that and select the vpc and now here we want to allow two rules in the inbound one is http because we are going to install our application and we are going to access this application on port 80 so we need to select http somewhere we want to access from anywhere so first rule is set up now second rule we also want to access access our ec2 instance for administrative purpose for that we need ssh so for that port 22 is added so where so as of now i'm going to access from anywhere we going to give access for the anywhere but if you are working for your demo i will say go ahead and here select my ip address so by default it will get your ip address or if you are working for a company then select company network okay again this is advanced topic let's not go there and create a security group and we are almost done everything from the networking perspective now let's go to our documentation and now all good security group got created okay review it and all good there are some best practices and everything okay i'm not going to read it here okay but all sets now now second is to launch ec2 instance okay again for that all steps are given over here 
so i know all those steps so let me quickly follow it and again i recommend if you have not watched the ec2 instance uh, compute session please go ahead and watch that because that's very very important I have covered compute in very details so if you talk about this architecture so now what we are going to do we are going to launch this web server a ec2 instance for the web server where we are where we will be deploying our application so let me minimize this let's go to the aws account and to create a compute we need to go in ec2 service and select ec2 it's loading and we see we don't have anything running over here other than three snapshots and we have two security group one was default one we created and two key pair okay so already we have created one key pair when i was doing the demo before creating uh, coming for this recordings okay one is for one of the application anyways now we want to launch ec2 instance we can click here launch ec2 instance and here we'll give name so let's give this epic reads wave server and you can add additional tags here okay i'm not going to do that again i've talked this in very detail in the compute session i will select the ami what is ami again is very detailed i have discussed in the compute session i'm going to select amazon linux 2 and then scroll down here I will select the micro EC2 instance is fall into the free tier for key pair I will select the epic read okay name is wrong here but anyways it didn't matter let me select that and the for networking by default I have one VPC so this got selected but let me edit here you see you can change the if you have the multiple VPC here you can also select the subnet where you want to launch this your web server I want to launch in the public subnet also, I want to attach auto assign public IP address. Then in security group, I don't want to create security group because we have already created a security group. Then we are going to select this web server SC. Right? Then for the storage, 8 GB is good enough. And there's some advanced configuration. Let's not go there. It's not needed now. And let's launch this. And whatever step you have seen here. I have explained this in very very detail in the compute session so once again i will recommend go ahead and watch that okay so it will be easy for you and you will be able to understand each and every term now it will take some time once it will be ready then we are going to connect with it but meantime let's look at our architecture so what we have did here we have created ec2 instance for our web server now let's go to our documentation and see where we are okay so launching ec2 instance follow all these then launch ec2 instance we have done same things then select the ami what is ami you see is completed explained very in detail in this aws mastery program as i said this all documentation belongs to the aws mastery program then yes select the ec2 instance then key pair we have selected then we launch ec2 instance and security group setup was as expected port 22 is open 80 is open why this is open again you see it's explained very well over here then launch ec2 instance storage configuration right and now we are going to connect with it okay so here is couple of way to connect with it so let go there and see if this is ready refresh this now this is ready okay click on the connect and we can use ec2 instance connect session manager and ssh and all these options okay so in documentation it's shown ssh connection but here we will use ec2 instance okay why session manager again this is very advanced topic and maybe this is i will cover sometime later because we have another session okay we have another okay so we have another assignments given over here okay 
so that will talk some other time why we should use that but anyways let's go back here and go to the AWS documentation EC2 instance connect and click on the connect see if we are able to connect sometimes it takes time because EC2 instance was getting initialized and 2 by 2 check was not passed you see it's still getting initialized this 2 by 2 check but let's see okay well done we got connected over here so let me select that perfect now we got connected now let's go to the documentation and we got connected and these steps we now need to do because we are using EC2 instance connect if you are using here this option you select connect this SSH then you have to follow the rest of the documentation but just I'm skipping it okay and now what we are going to do we are going to install the application on this EC2 instance okay and this application name is WordPress see for this demo purpose we are going to install WordPress but application is application right is WordPress or maybe any other application okay steps remain the same okay it didn't matter and if you don't know what this is the CMS software and 80% of the CMS runs on the WordPress okay big big applications big big company using WordPress to run their content management system okay so very powerful software and you can here do any things from the blogging to setting up the company websites setting up the e-commerce platforms okay it supports wide range of the use cases okay so when we are setting this wordpress don't think this is wordpress okay it could be very big application again you have to do some customization once you install it but here you see installation is the main part anyways now in this documentation we have some common errors i know what kind of error you get so again i have documented here but anyways and for that again you have the solution and all but first things first what we need to do once we connect it we need to run this yum update to ensure all packages are up to date over here so let's go here and paste and run it looks like everything is updated let's go to the next and next command we are going to run yum install httpd so what is httpd httpd is the web server that we need to run our wordpress application so this is what we are installing over here now let's go to the next we install apache web server next step is to start the web server and also check the status so let's run this command now let's copy the next command and even simply you can go here i will change this start to status status and this is running perfectly fine now I scroll down we see this was the expected outputs okay from the screen we are quite same let's we see and then we are ready to okay now it's saying go ahead test if this apache http is running or not and for that we need to get public ip address of our ec2 instance okay and here like this go and run it and ensure you are using http not https okay so let's go here on our ec2 instance and go back we select here and get this ip address and let me open the new tab and type http then double slash and ip address now we see apache httpd is running for us okay so all good so far <clears throat> now next step is to install php and the mysql so we have to run this command let me copy this and go to our terminal and let's do the clear and paste the command and see it's running now we'll go ahead and copy the next command we see this should be output okay again this is explain okay what packages we are installing and what is used for what okay because we see here we're running different commands right you see different software so this is explained over here anyways 
scroll down next we are going to install mysql yeah, copy this and before that okay you have to ensure when you are running these commands this command is executing as expected you should not fail it sometime i see just people close their eyes <laughs> copy and paste the command okay even something is not working they feel like oh it's working right but end result you're not able to access the application so ensure even we're running any command make sure this is running now very good example you see here nothing is got installed here right why it's saying here we're trying to install mysql right but it's saying this package already got installed when we have installed maria db okay this package okay in previous command he's saying it's already installed the latest version so now check the previous command okay just i use the arrow command so when we you install this software so mysql also got installed with the maria db okay if you don't know maria db is another flavor of the mysql okay so that's why i got this message right so you, we need to understand as a cloud engineer when you are running some command what is purpose of what and what is happening on the screen okay and if you're new to this okay how these commands work how this working okay <clears throat> so you should okay now next step is to now okay now we've done everything so now we need to set up the wordpress okay so we have copied this let's go here cd html ww okay var ww html and then <clears throat> We need to download the WordPress. So this is the command. Okay, no. So CT. Okay, yes. So this is we are going to get WKit to download it. And this is downloading. And after that, we are going to unzip it. And for that, we are going to use this command. Let me copy it. If you go here, now if you do ls, <coughs> you will see this latest is got downloaded here right let's unzip it it will take couple of more second it will be going to unzip this whole application okay now next command is to we need to go into cd in the wordpress and we're going to do some configuration here okay so this is still unpacking but one thing here if you are confused okay what this all command linux command is so for that purpose you can check my university okay pravin misra in aws university so if you type university dot pravin misra dot in slash learn you can see all my courses over here and here this one course if you see here linux for the cloud engineer so here i have used a real time application to deploy on aws account and i've used all command and explain in very detail okay so if you're struggling with that you can go ahead and use this course okay to learn all these commands what i'm running here and what is meaning of all these commands anyways coming back to topic let's run the command go into the uh, wordpress directory what is meaning of cd so those kind of things i've explained on those course now what we are going to do we are going to modify we are going to create a wordpress config file from this configuration file so what we are doing we are copying cp means copy okay again we have all these commands so to be very honest to become a successful cloud engineer okay you not need to be master in the linux but you should have very good understanding of around 40 to 50 linux command okay and this is what i said i have explained in all these courses in this course okay but anyways so now let's copy this and what we are doing we are copying this file to this file okay so this is sample file so we are going to create a main file for our wordpress configuration okay so if you go in our ec2 instance now if you do ls minus minus a l or maybe if you type double l okay sorry double l then you see we have this configuration file right and this configuration file we are going to copy maybe ls minus a l okay now you see some okay same command so we see this file is there so going to from this file we're going to copy 
make a another configuration file so that need to be modified okay copy it if you see we should have this configuration file wp config and we need to modify it but before that we need to change the permission of this folder with this apache user and the group and also we are going to change the permission of this folder so let's do that and clear the screen and next we are going to okay so all this configuration is done now next is to create a database for our application okay and for that we need to go in our rds dashboard now let's quickly recap where we are in the architecture so here we have launch ec2 instance and we are installing our application in this ec2 instance okay now we are going to launch this database waves database for our application okay now let's go to our documentation and saying go to rds dashboard and before we create a rds instance we need to create a subnet group okay so let's go to our aws okay aws account and here select rds let's open in the new tab and here you see we have the subnet group what is subnet group again this i have explained in very detail in our database session okay so please go ahead and watch that if you have not completed so let's give this name epic reads subnet group g r o u p and we need to give the description so this is epic reads subnet group and let's select the vpc and here we need to add the subnet so our private subnet is in ap south one let's select this and go ahead and okay select this then we need to select the subnet as well okay so here this 10.0.1.0 this one is our private subnet i remember okay if you turn you need to go to your vpc click here vpc let's go to the vpc dashboard so just ensure you are using the right subnet select this and this you see this subnet okay has this id okay 777 correct and this ip address so i have selected because i remember the ip range so i will use this one otherwise you can use this subnet id right so let's go here okay you see 777 this is what i have selected let's create it it's not going to create for you it's going to give some error why this giving some error you read from here is saying subnet group doesn't meet the ability zone coverage requirement because current az coverage is ap south one add another subnet at least one more to make it high available okay again I have very explained this in very detail okay in database session so please go ahead and watch that so what we need to do here here we need to create another private subnet okay we need at least two private subnet so it's very simple we know how to create it so let's select the our vpc and give the name private subnet name should be two right because we have already created one then epic rates then ability zones will now we'll select the ap south 1b because one is already in 1a second will go in 1b because if one edge ap south one goes down then our application will remain high available very important concept again covered in very detail in the database session and now ip address will be 10 point sorry ip range will be 10.0.0.0 slash no it will be 2 here then slash 24 and create the subnet 
So now this private subnet and one more things what we need to do we need to add to this the round table okay no sorry wrong we need to add to this in the uh, round table association sorry wrong let me do it this way go to route table select the private route table and go to the subnet association and here we want to edit it we want to add another private subnet as well and save it now we have to private subnet okay associated with our private route table all set let's go to the database once again and here again select this now we have another subnet in ap south 1b if you select here now we see we have okay 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 ap1 south a and here okay now this is not selecting we need to refresh this and we don't see an option to refresh so let me deselect all select ap south 1 ap south b okay let's see if this appears it's not appearing what does it mean it means we need to create from again let me copy this let's go back here it's not a refreshing okay so i copied this <laughs> to save the time then this give the description this is epic reads subnet group then select the vpc and we'll select our two ability zones ap south 1a ap south 1b and select the subnet now we see it appears here right so in ap south 1a this was the private subnet okay and ap south b this one again if you're confused go ahead here and you can check this ids from here okay in your <coughs> so ad 77 i'm selecting right one so you see ad right ad and 77 perfect all set now create and our subnet group got created perfect let's go back to our documentation and here now is saying how to create our database so again this is very nice documentation to create our database okay so you can follow it if you are part of aws mastery but anyways i know all these steps so let me do that so click here databases create database and we'll use the standard one and select the mysql and then we will before that we will select here template free tier okay and mysql version is default this multiple mysql version so let's go with the default one then we not need high ability here uh, database identifier let it be database one so database uh, master user name admin let the it's auto generate the password so but this is not recommended for your production workload and scroll down we have db t2 microservice database instance selected you can also select another one this uh, db t 4g micro but it's okay for us okay storage is 20 gb is good enough and auto scaling not needed uh, vpc we have default this vpc got selected we have single vpc subnet group again that subnet group we don't need the public access <coughs> and do we need to create the security group yes let's create the security group and here let's give this epic epic reads dbsc okay and we'll edit this later and certificate and all i think rest looks good and monitoring monitoring estimated cost but here we'll do some advanced configuration okay so let's give our initial database name we'll give this word wordpress again friends i have very i have explained all these things in very detail in database session so please i will highly recommend to watching that <coughs> do we need backup not at all 
encryption may be not needed but it's recommended for your production and customer applications maintenance or to minor updates i will untick it this is a demo purpose okay and 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 that's all let's go ahead and create the database and database creation takes some time okay and he is asking for some another configuration like for elastic cache and rds proxy is not needed leave it and here we can get our password okay so let me copy this password and put it in somewhere okay so we are going to use it later save close this and now if you open this we are going to get our database endpoint okay so as is creating it is going to take some time but before that let's go to our architecture and see where we are so what we did we have web server and we have been installing the WordPress application over here okay we are still spending we are going to follow that then we have created our database server right and now let's go to our documentation okay minimum is creating and see where we are with the documentation so it's getting created 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 okay select select no all configuration looks good 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 okay nothing is enabled here perfect we did same thing it's getting created and meantime we will set up the security group for our database okay what does it mean what we're going to be here do here let's understand from this architecture so here you see we have this web server right and for this web server we have created this web server security group right it means with this security group is acting as a firewall for this web server right and we decided who can access our web server with the security group same way we also noticed while creating this database we have also created a db security group right ap create db security group <coughs> now this okay now we didn't the we did all the configuration over here right but for this we haven't put any configuration so here we need to allow inbound rule to let this security group know who can access this database okay so as you see in the architecture in architecture this web server going to access this database correct so we need to allow here access of this database from this web server and again this is a very detailed topic i won't go in detail so one good things what we can do we can do the security group chaining so what we are going to do we are going to allow mysql access to this db security group from this web server security group okay this is called security chaining okay so how do we do that let's go in our aws console and let's go to vpc and let's go to the security group and now here we see we have db security group right so let's rename this let's give this db sc okay and this let's give as web sc web server security group right so web server security group is quite fine we have all inbound rules here we have already defined who is going to access it okay http ssh the same we need to do for the db server as well right there's no inbound rule okay there's already inbound rule okay but source is this ip address this is what we don't need right so we're going to modify it so click on edit and then let's delete this okay let's add the new role and here select mysql aurora okay so scroll down mysql aurora so we are using mysql database so port 83306 and here i'm going we are going to use custom and from where we want to give access of this database to this database security group from our web server security group okay so only the ec2 instance or maybe web server which has this security group okay that can access our database okay so this is called security chaining 
and save it okay so this is very very tightly integration and security layer okay now let's go to the database we see database got created now we also supposed to see endpoint over here we need this endpoint in our later stage but let's go and follow our documentation so we have set up the security group this all explained over here now we are going to configure wordpress over here okay but before we configure wordpress we are going to test if we are able to access let me show you we are going to test here if we are able to access from our web server to our this database because we have established this security group configuration right so for that we are going to follow these steps let me delete this let's go back to our documentation we are going to export our database endpoint in our ec2 instance so now if you go here this is our ec2 instance right this is our ec2 instance and this is got disconnected okay so let me close this and let's reconnect again session manager and connect it okay let me type one command here is true okay i see all the command perfect i need this somehow now we are going to export our database endpoint here so let's copy this database endpoint okay here okay is set let's look at the documentation next we are going to connect and test if you are able to connect from our ec2 instance to our database so as i was saying now here we are in our ec2 instance right so what we are saying we are going to connect to our wordpress database so this is database right this is database where this database is this database is on our mysql okay where this is the host this is the host okay so we have exported this and now here are going to give username what was the username of this database it was admin right if you don't remember go to the database okay and if you okay we lost here okay view the connection details right so you see this is the admin is the username right so this username what we have setting here so admin and what is the password password we already copied but if you don't remember you see we have copied from here right but we can also get it from here our rds okay this is our database let's copy it go here and paste and hit enter now you see we are in the mysql okay it means sorry it means we are we are in the mysql you see in mysql it means we have connected from our this web server to our this database okay so now this connection is fine now let's go ahead and follow the next step let's go to here here okay now here this additional steps to create the another user in our database so technically when you are running a production application okay we should not use the same database username like admin what we have used okay so we should create another user so this is what this step is doing but this demo so i'm going to skip this okay and exit okay we have already did it now we are going to configure our wordpress what we are going to do here in wordpress application configuration we're going to set up database credentials here username password and the database name and endpoint so our web server application wordpress application that's hosted here it will be able to connect to this database web database server database okay so that what we are going to do configure in our wordpress configuration okay 
So let's put here. No, 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 no. Okay, that's a mistake. <laughs> so here we are in the MySQL. We were in the MySQL. We need to exit here. We got exited here, right? So let's do pwd. We are in the that not right folder. Okay, here we need to go cd var ww html. Right? Here we have the WordPress application, right? Here we have the all configuration. So guys, let's not only just follow the steps but also know what we are doing. So we downloaded our WordPress application where at this PWD. Okay. So again, this kind of things I have already covered in very detail in Linux for the cloud engineer course. Okay. So if you do LL, LL, so you see the all configuration files are here, right? So we are going to configure this configuration file for the database. Okay. So we already know the command, open it. If you scroll down where we see all these details, we need to modify here, right? So first things first, we need to modify database name. So what is database name? Database name is WordPress. What is username? I'm going to use admin username. What is password? I'll copy password from here. I can also copy from RDS console. Okay. Now, what is database endpoint? That's very important. That we can get from our database console right this is our endpoint copy it let's go here and paste it now i'm going to save it and now i remember i did one mistake <laughs> this file i supposed to copy with the open with the sudo ah it's open perfect let me see it ah no sudo was here this command was there sudo perfect so let's wp config config.php let's verify our okay all things are perfect here to ensure guys this configuration very very important if you miss any configuration okay then you know application is not going to run perfect now we have to do some small configuration for that we need to copy this all wordpress salt okay copy here okay then let's go to our EC2 instance. Again, we have to open the same configuration and go down. And here we have to delete all these lines and we have to paste what I've copied here. Okay. So here, if you have opened this with the VI, then press double D continuous. Okay. Without hitting I. Okay. And this will get deleted. Now press enter and i run this command and again save it okay we have to do on a small configuration here but if you see i'm a little bit cautious i'm not uh, doing all this configuration at one time because there's chance i can miss it okay so i'm doing one by one to ensure i'm missing nothing and also verifying next time when i'm doing the next configuration now you see here this looks quite good okay now we have to go at end of the file okay and i will again hit int i okay then next arrow and then insert it then i will save it now we have done all the configuration here okay <coughs> and all set now mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay perfect now all set now we have to run couple of commands okay install couple of application one of them is php xml so let's clear the command line install it then again we have to go one command before okay so you see where is pw we are in html wordpress okay but technically our application on a web server run 
run on HTML on the HTML but what we need to do we have to copy all the file from all the file application file from WordPress to HTML I'm going to do here CD okay now we do PWD we are in HTML right in HTML directly okay so now let's again now we have to do this again use okay now what we are going to do we are going to copy all the files from wordpress to our fire wwhtml okay so here do enter now if you do ll you see all configuration got copied over here right along with this latest okay anyways let us not going to create any problem but again you can remove from here now again we have to change the permission of this html and as we have done a lot of configuration so now start the httpd now see the status 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 now it's running perfectly fine now again restart the php fpm all good and one thing more i will do here i will enable our httpd okay this command is missing here so let me enable it ma enable okay something is got created what does it mean it means if we restart our web server then still okay then it will also start it will also start the apache as well okay apache http so we need to enable it if you don't enable it so when you restart your ec2 instance okay then it will be in stop okay so all set now now what is saying now we can go and access our wordpress and for that we have to use this like okay http then public ip address of the ec2 instance then wp admin okay then we have to do the configuration so let's go here let's get the public ip address of our ec2 instance reload it he's saying session is expired but i hope not yes select copy it i'm opening the new tab let's open the new tab and let me bring it here so you can see what i'm typing here let me close this uh, let me copy the ip once again and ip once again open tab and yes let me maximize this so you can see then http slash slash ip address slash wp admin okay now it's loading perfect now you see here wordpress is ready to install but sometime okay it will take time okay immediately you will try if your instance is very small okay so sometime it takes time so don't worry okay you have to wait for that now we see this is english this language is what i need and continue here we have to give some configuration let's keep this pravin misra's blog and username let's give this admin let me copy this password maybe we need it later not maybe we need it for the logging purpose and then email id give hello at the rate Ravin Mishra M I S H R A dot in and install WordPress and now need to save it. Okay. Again, here it will again take some time for this installation. We are given this configuration. So what is doing? In backend, this is installing the WordPress. Okay. So let's log in over here and give the username admin. Okay. And the password we copied. Login it not save it 
let me make it a little bigger okay perfect now you see here wordpress is installed okay now you can create the different pages here if you want okay or post okay so let's create one of the new post here it's loading 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 i now need this introduction type login resource blog okay this is my first blog if you like this video and my work please do hit the like button like and comment how do you like this and don't forget to subscribe my channel subscribe the channel cha channel to get similar similar video perfect i hope you're following it let's publish this publish and let's you can copy this also you can view this and now see this is running perfect okay congratulations now if you go and just use the ip address what you use here okay this ip address you will see our wordpress application is running this is the default page perfect so now let me put it back to the let me put it back this tab here okay anyways let me copy this close this let me open in the another tab <coughs> okay now let's go back to our documentation okay now we have configured everything is fine we also created the first page okay and here is the okay now last things what we can do we can configure domain name to access our application i know this is guys very important steps okay when you are working for a customer okay so now we are you know accessing this from my ip address but if you want to access from the real up domain name how do we do that just go to the AWS console here okay and type root 53 53 okay and I have already domain name so I will show you here I have this domain name so I will try to open it edit it and here I'm going to change this a record okay again this is a very detailed topic don't let's go there let me quickly set it up here for you and set this okay it got saved some time it takes some time to dns get update but let's try to access it the epic books see if able to we are able to access well done now you see we are able to access our application wordpress application from this domain name guys if you like this please hit the like button let me in the comment how do you feel it and subscribe the channel for getting this kind of video perfect now let's check the documentation and looks like we are quite good this couple of things we can do for the terms of the web okay for the our web server security groups okay so let's not follow this okay i'm not going to do that here and then this again a lot more things we can do like securing our ec2 instance maybe all these topics i'm going to cover later okay so if you want to hear about all those things do let me know in the comment section again next video could be on high ability okay how we make this whole application high available so again i want to know from you how did you like it so that's pretty much for today so thank you so much I wish you keep great learning and see you in the next video. Thank you.